So firstly, Tashi Dele, greetings to all Dharma friends. So today we are going to continue with this series on the Langrim, the stages of the path Shargon, the glance meditation. And so we're continuing today with this series on the six paramitas or the six perfections with the teaching which the teachings describe as necessary for purifying or for ripening one's own continuum, one's own mind. And so this practice, what it will help us to do is it will help us to um, develop an antidote, an antidote to the afflictions, the root afflictions and all of those branch afflictions. And it is those root and branch afflictions that cause the unhappiness, all of the disturbances in the mind and so forth. And so up to now, we've actually briefly at least covered the first five of those six paramitas or perfections. And so today, this brings us to the sixth paramita or perfection, which is almost like the king, a prominent perfection, the perfection of wisdom. It is said that the victor or the Buddha, when he came to this world, that he taught 84,000 dharmas, 84,000 teachings. And in the scriptures, it says that all of these are for the arising of wisdom. So why this emphasis? Why was it said that wisdom is so important? Because we understand that what leads to our temporary problems, what leads to the difficulties of samsara or cyclic existence, at the root of all of these problems and obstacles is the ignorance grasping at the self. That is the main one, along with the branch afflictions like attachment, anger, and so forth. So we'll take a moment to just relax our mind, but with this motivation, understanding that if we want our minds to be happy and peaceful, then it is very important to bring forth this wisdom. So the body and mind should be relaxed, right? Because we want to bring forth a peaceful feeling in the mind. So in the component of ourselves as a person, right, we have like three important components of the body, the speech, and the mind. And in terms of this body, speech, and mind, when we think of the person, the main thing is the mind. And if we think of the mind's natural state, its true nature, it is this thing of pure luminosity. And because of that luminosity, the mind, whatever object it focuses on, it has the capacity to bring forth that object, to understand it, to hold it, to come to knowledge of it. So 
So in terms of the many different types of wisdom, one of the most important ones that we need to comprehend is the wisdom of the dependent arising of cause and effect, dependent arising of causality. Whatever result that is experienced, whether big or small, whoever the experience experiencer is, we understand that um, that result arises from a cause, an appropriate cause. So understanding this, understanding that through wisdom that this dependent arising of cause and effect is really just how things are, just how they really are, then when we reflect on ourselves, we understand that it is important to be kind to everyone. Because if we show loving kindness to others, then as a result, we will have the result of others showing kindness to us, of receiving good things back to ourselves from that cause. And if we think about that, any result that we have of happiness or suffering, the experiences that we have, they arise in relation to others, don't they? If we place causes of concern for others, of compassion and love in our heart, then as a result of that, we will get good things returned to us. That's cause and effect. So, if that's the case, and we can comprehend that clearly, then why do we have all of these difficult feelings, experiences, mental projections that arise? We could say that mainly those projections, those unpleasant thoughts and things that are arising, they're arising mainly due to attachment and aversion. If we think of attachment, for example, attachment sees an attractive object and it exaggerates its qualities, it exaggerates its beauty, its attractiveness, and in this way, all sorts of additional projections happen, difficult feelings arise, the mind is disturbed. In terms of aversion, it's from seeing an unpleasant thing, maybe a small fault, exaggerating that fault, and then becoming overcome with aversion, that unpleasant feeling. So that is also an exaggeration. So we could see clearly, and we should have the strong understanding that so many of the projections, the unpleasant feelings, the stress that we experience, it's due to this attachment and aversion. 
So then we would think, well, in terms of that attachment and aversion, what do we need to diminish that, to clear that away? We should understand that these attachments and aversion, these are coarser level of levels of mind, but operating behind that attachment and aversion is this ignorance grasping at the self. If we think of a flower, for example, a beautiful flower, we will see its colors, we will see its fresh and beautiful nature, and then there's some exaggeration that happens, and then a strong mind of attachment arises in relation to that. And then we could also see that perhaps what happens is as that flower ages and wilts and so forth, because of that previous attachment, then we experience some sense of disappointment or an unpleasant feeling. But we have to use our wisdom to see how that flower really exists. And by seeing that that flower does not really exist in the way that it appears, right? Then there'll be less troubling thoughts. We have to use our wisdom here. If we're to separate out each leaf, each petal of that flower to disassemble those parts, then there wouldn't be no pinpointable, stable flower that we could point to. There would be no pinpointable, stable flower that we could say, yes, this is the flower. <laughs> We see that the flower, even on the smaller levels of cells and molecules and so forth, it's the assembly of these upon which the flower is designated. It's designated upon all of these parts coming together. So there's no solid, pinpointable, beautiful flower like we saw in that initial impression. And when we talk about attachment and version arising in terms of objects, often, right, those are arising in relation to other people. So if we think about attachment and aversion in terms of a person, let us take attachment. Attachment arises due to that physical form, that body. And so then we might think that that person has a handsome or a beautiful body. And then in this way, um, attachment arise, is arising. But we should think that it is not existing in the way that it appears through that lens. That person that is seen as beautiful, we should understand that person is only designated, designated dependently upon a lot of factors or parts coming together. So the initial impression through that lens of attachment of how that person um, appears or exists is not accurate because we understand that just as with the flower, that person's physical form, their body in this instance, is the coming together of many different factors, even particles and so forth. And so that solid, uh, handsome or beautiful image that we saw, that is not really how that object is. 
So understanding this in a stable way will see that <clears throat> no matter what object, whether a human being, a car, a house, and so forth, that sort of way that we see them and that gives rise to this strong attachment or maybe this aversion, if we understand how they really are, we'll see there's no need for that. There's no need for all that projection. And then we want to have a thought that through using that wisdom, through thinking that way, may my life become more calm and peaceful. That's our aim. Thanks very much.